Hey everyone, I'm Harry, and in this video, Alyssa and I will be giving you a full tour of our self-converted box truck into a tiny home on wheels. We're super excited to share this with you. We just spent the last six months building it out by hand. We're really happy with the end result, and we're living in it now for the last two weeks. So without further ado, let's show you inside. All right, so starting off, you can't help but notice this beautiful mural on the back of the truck, which by the way, the truck's name is Basil. So on the back of Basil here, we have a uh, spray painted piece of artwork by our friend James. Uh, his handle on Instagram is 1440, we'll link that below. But he came out and uh, painted this beautiful mural of the mountains and the trees on the back. And we're just really happy with it because without that, it would just look like a boring old bank truck or something like that. So uh, for starters, we have the bike rack on the back here. Uh, this can hold two bikes. Um, I'm about to buy a mountain bike, but right now we just have Alyssa's bike. And we can get in the truck without removing the bike. It's no problem. This door still opens um, and we can shimmy through. But if we wanted to post up for the day somewhere and kind of open up the back doors, it's really easy to just bring the bike rack down. So all you do is come down here remove the pin and then the bike just comes down like that and then we can open up the big back barn doors like this and we can actually clamp the doors on the side just like that so they stay up against the wall which is really nice so we really liked this box truck because it does have the barn doors where most box trucks that you find like U-Hauls, they have the roll up doors, which in that case you lose a lot of ceiling space. So I'm just gonna latch this door real quick. And here you have Basil. This is the pretty much finished result of our tiny home that we converted inside of here. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Alyssa now. She's going to show you all the goodies inside. Um, but one last thing that I'll show you real quick is these one wheel chargers that we installed. So we actually have a one wheel charging station. If you can't tell by now, we are avid one wheelers. They are the absolute best. Um, but we have a stand right here that they can charge in um, while sitting here. So we're really stoked on that. But uh, yeah, Alyssa will take it over from here. All right, and now into the truck. So first of all, I want to say thank you for being here. It's been my dream since I was probably like 15 to live in a tiny home. So this is pretty surreal and it still trips me out every day that we built this by ourselves. But um, I'm going to start off with the shower box. Uh, we have it in the back just in case you want to rinse off our feet after the beach or just take an outdoor shower. It's really nice. Usually it's locked up and then we just go like this and we have hot and cold water. I'm going to mention one of my favorite things in this build and it's the flooring because I think it's super unique. Um, we apologize for the salt. We just got done at the salt flats in Utah, so still a little bit dirty. But anyways, this flooring is called Marmoleum and it's an eco-friendly option. Um, basically Marmoleum is a type of vinyl and it's made out of linseed oil, which is flax seeds. Um, and it's mixed with a few other eco-friendly ingredients, but um, this color is called Chateau which is super beautiful because it has a very like unique blend of like four different colors and I think it's super groovy okay so I know you're probably thinking that these are just cushions but I just have to um, point out that we hand sewed these cushions <laughs> with our friend Kirby and they took forever so yeah, these are hand stitch cushions. We just ordered the foam um, online and we decided to chuck up a whiteboard because towards the end of the build, we had so much like little things that we wanted to remember. We just made quick to-do lists and we ended up keeping it up because it's really nice to have a whiteboard. We're gonna move into the kitchen. I love the kitchen, it's just so homey. We have a copper sink, it's from Syncology and we just um, found this faucet online. We chose to go with bronze um, as the overall kitchen vibe. We got the honeycomb backsplash because, fun fact about Alyssa, I'm a beekeeper and this reminds me of honeycombs and bees and I think it's so cute. Butcher block from Home Depot, super durable. It's nice because um, if you scratch it or something stains, you can rub butcher block oil over it and it kind of like smooths it out and takes it away. So the butcher block is, um, yeah, it's super durable and we love it. 
we have our electric induction stove, but I'm going to let Harry explain all the technical and electrical things after I'm done. Harry picked out these cute little cabinet knobs. They're bronze to match everything else. And we have just a little pantry up here. It's a mess right now, but just a ton of vitamins, snacks, all the like the dried goods are up here. And we decided to put two cabinet latches to really secure it in when we're driving to make sure it doesn't fly open. So we just go like that, and you can hear it click, and it's it's pretty sturdy. So highly recommend cabinet latches. If not, have fun cleaning up. So we have our little outlet right here with a kitchen dimmer. It's pretty nice to make it a romantic night. <laughs> And yeah, two outlets, so it's pretty nice. And then we're gonna move over to this outlet. I love this outlet because we can plug things in um, and it reaches our bed when our bed is like down. So this outlet, it's very handy. We got these pillows from Consignment Classics in San Diego. If you ever find yourself there, definitely check that place out, it's awesome. And speaking of a bed, we have a Happy Jack, which is on a hydraulic bed lift. So it runs, it's just run by our electric electrical system. Um, so we basically just press this button and it goes down. And we basically go all the way down to where that outlet is, so. Super comfortable. We have a little skylight back there. And yeah, this is our bed. So comfortable. We have linen bed sheets and it's just heaven. It's about be between a full and queen size. So we both fit perfectly on here. And then we just put it back up when we're done. Again, this is called a happy jack and it's spelled with an I instead of a Y and no K on the end. We will link it in the description below so you guys can find it. And we go, that's good. While we're on this side, I'll show you guys, this is our like kitchen table um, slash hangout area. And it's just a cir circle table for good feng shui. We got it from Lowe's and then we stained it white to match the walls. And it's on a lagoon table swivel mount. Um, so we're able to adjust it as needed if we need it to go up, down, side to side. Also a lazy Susan, so you can turn it around and share the goodness. So yeah, that's pretty rad. We can just move it over. Oh, this is my friend Wiley's art. Shout out Wiley E. Thank you for decorating our home. Okay, friends. So now it's time to show you the bottom kitchen cabinets. By the way, we got all the cabinets from Ikea and it was kind of annoying to put everything together, honestly, but it worked out really well. Um, I think it was a bit more efficient since we've never built cabinets before. It just worked out for us and I love the color. I think Ikea has a great selection of colors. So the first drawer is kind of just a few utensils like bamboo stuff, cooking ware, all the good things. And here we have our silverware to go, um, tins, we have some tea, metal cups, metal's great, glass breaks, so be careful with glass. And then in our last drawer we have a fat bag of weed, just kidding, this is spearmint tea from um, Mountain Rose in Oregon, it's like organic herbs, anyways. Um, we have our pots and pans, we have our bowls, like coconut bowls, coffee stuff, plates. These are bamboo plates, so they won't break. Um, yeah, and just like some to-go drinkware. And then under the sink, we have just a bunch of like random jars. Like, so I keep all my glass down here. And then we have like cutting boards, paper towels, towels, trash can, sponges, tissues, com compostable trash bags, which I think are great. And then we have our EcoSmart water heater, which is amazing. And then we also have our Aquasana water filter. So this filters all of the water in the van, um, the sink water, the shower, and then the shower hose back in the back. And now for my closet. Harry was super nice and he gave me the bigger closet. Um, although he has drawers, so I have baskets. But anyways, this is my closet. All right, moving on. We have our little refrigerator right here. I'll tell you guys a little secret. Um, the first day we drove with this refrigerator in, we forgot to bolt it in and it fell. So we have a little dent right here. We just like to cover it up with my best friend, Marissa. And then we got a freezer, which is awesome. Got a fridge, 
which is awesome. Not a mini fridge, but not a full size fridge. It's kind of like in the middle, so it's perfect. We have a fruit bag. We're out of fruit right now. We just got some sweet potatoes chilling in there. This is just a random little space that we have. I stuff like yoga mats. We have a flute and it's a great space to like just stick whatever you can in there. <laughs> and over here we have Harry's man cave, which is his favorite part of the build. It's his desk and my desk too sometimes when I want to work, but great working desk. We have our desktop that we can plug in for TV, second screen, kind of whatever you want to. And we just have it mounted on the wall back here. So it's, it's pretty in there. Um, so yeah, desk and then the seat. A little foam roller action. Have you ever tried foam rolling? If not, I highly recommend. So this seat's pretty cool because it's multi-purpose. Um, again, we hand stitched this cute little seat <laughs> and we built this box, painted it, put hinges on the back and made it a seat slash shoe box. So I was worried about where we were gonna store all of our shoes. So this works out perfectly. I just put that on there. And you slide it back in. <laughs> I kind of, I want to, we want to put a handle here so it's a little bit easier. Anyways, you get the point. So this is the desk. Okay, upper cabinets. Um, well, we have, by the way, above these upper cabinets is a little bit of storage. So we decided to stuff some backpacks up there because, you know, when you live in a tiny home, every single space counts as space to put something so might as well fill it up so there's bags up there and then oh this is pretty normal this is just an upper cabinet with a bunch of our gear and goodies and like i mentioned cabinet latches because one's not good enough you gotta have two same thing over here just a bunch of our life stuff that we will need and back in all right this is the overhead cab and we actually just decided to insulate it and put in ikea cabinets because that was the most efficient thing we could think of honestly which has worked out pretty well because up here we have all of our towels and that's an extra pillow for when guests spend the night but this kind of goes back a little bit so it's just stuffed with beach towels shower towels you name it we have a little tripod stuffed in this corner right here this is a beautiful cab door that our friend doug helped us build and my friend amy who owns um, a glassworks company in minnesota she crafted this beautiful piece for us this stained glass piece represents the four elements of nature and also the four directions and it's just a very beautiful piece with copper the sun there's like a lotus in there if you can see crescent moon, beautiful warm colors, and I think it's the most perfect thing ever we could have put on our door. And this just opens. So there's that. We have another light switch right here. <laughs> and this cabinet is basically our outdoor cabinet. So it's stuffed with like my beekeeping suit, a slack line, sleeping pad, tent, more tripods, bananagrams, Uno, all the games, all the outdoor stuff is just kind of like stuffed in this cabinet. Over here, we have our shower. Uh, our friend Brayden really helped us out a lot with this shower. Also Kirby and Travis, shout out. Thanks for the help on the shower. Uh, for the walls, we used this um, sort of marble looking uh, tile uh, called Duma Wall. We got it at Lowe's and uh, we really like it. It's uh, waterproof tiles. We grouted in between. We built this little cubby up here to where we can put uh, like our soap dish. Um, and then on the floor we have our uh, stone bottom floor which uh, pardon us right now we have to put more grout in there so it's actually still unfinished on that section. But uh, we really like the stone floor. It feels really nice on our feet while we're showering. Uh, we also have this uh, Dometic cassette toilet. Uh, it works great for us. Um, yeah. Um, what more can you say about a toilet? 
All right, so for this, we have our Dometic waterproof toilet paper roll holder. Uh, it's really awesome because it's waterproof. It mounts on the wall right in front of where you're going to the toilet. And then you just lift this thing up, the toilet paper rolls out. And then it's really nice when you close it, it actually rolls the toilet paper back up in there. We have our uh, shower here, our shower head and mixer. Um, this is a uh, shower water filter. It filters out like 77 contaminants uh, from the water and it's just nice to shower in filtered water. It's from Symbiotica. It's uh, yeah, we highly recommend it. Also, if you're interested in getting a shower filter like this, um, we'll put a discount code in the description of this video and you'll be able to buy one yourself. It's really awesome. We also have this shower head that we bought from Lowe's. Uh, it matches our sink and it kind of goes with the copper bronze vibe. Um, yeah, we have this shower light here. Uh, up on the top, just an LED strip, and then we have the shower light switch right here. It's just a little hidden switch right there. Pretty cool. Um, and now I'll show you my closet. So um, yeah, this is my closet, pretty simple. And I have all these drawers right here. They're really nice, they roll out super easily. Really happy with these. Um, yeah, so this is the bottom of my closet. And then up here, we have kind of like all of our toiletries and like our first aid and some extra bits and bobs. Um, and then now I will get into the nitty gritty of the technical and the electrical and the plumbing. Um, and I know it's the moment you've all been waiting for. So let's head on over to the electrical cabinet. So over here under this bench is all of our electrical system. So we just remove these cushions. And as you can see, we um, just finished this build because we still have blue painters tape on the wall behind the cushion but hey um, then we remove this cushion and actually these cushions double as a guest bed so we can stack the cushions from both of the benches on the floor and someone can sleep on the floor under the bench here we have uh, all of our electrical system and for starters uh, down here we have 600 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries uh, six batteries uh, connected in parallel um, and then over to the right side we have our Renogy 3000 watt uh, inverter charger uh, which also uh, allows us to charge via uh, shore power um, we have our uh, 60 amp DC to DC battery charger by Renogy this allows us to charge the batteries while we're driving so that's really nice um, and the far side over there we have our uh, AC DC distribution panel so I'll show you that from the back of the van in just a moment but that's where all the branch circuits are connected to um, over here we have our zero breeze uh, 12 volt or 24 volt actually air conditioner uh, we just have it connected through a 12 to 24 volt converter and this uh, air conditioner blows really cold air through this duct and all the way up this pillar um, out of a little vent right up there and it blows really cold air right here. We have our um, EP Ever 80 amp MPPT solar charge controller um, this is connected to our uh, 380 watts of solar on the roof and right here we have our control panel which we installed with all of our monitors and switches uh, for all the components in the van so uh, starting from bottom to top, we have our uh, Renogy inverter charger switch. So we can turn on and off the inverter from here. But since our fridge is running off of 120 volts, we actually keep our inverter on all the time, uh, which is totally fine because we have enough battery power to handle it. Um, here and here, we have our light switches for our two main light circuits in the van. We have our indirect lighting switch and our uh, overhead ceiling lights, uh, the puck lights right here, and they're both on dimmers. Right here we have our Webasto uh, heater monitor. So this thing is really awesome. It gets the van really warm. It's a gasoline heater. It's from Russia. Uh, we'll put a link down in the description, but it's, uh, it's an amazing heater and we highly recommend it. Um, right here we have our uh, Renogy uh, battery monitor. So this thing tells us, you know, our battery percentage right now we're on 87%. We're using quite a bit of power right now because we're charging the one wheels and powering all the lights. 
Um, but it tells you everything you need to know about the battery consumption. This is our uh, Happy Jack bed lift switch. It's a solar monitor. And basically it shows us how much power is coming in from the solar. So in the back here, we have our distribution panel. This is where all of our branch circuits are connected to. Uh, these are all of our DC or 12 volt fuses. And then these are all of our AC or 120 volt breakers. And we have a computer fan right here. Um, that is to, it's on a temperature switch. So whenever the electrical cabinet gets over like 100 degrees, uh, the fan kicks on and it kind of ventilates the cabinet a little bit more. And then down here, we just have a little 12 volt cigarette lighter. We have an electric air pump for our inflatable paddle boards. So that's really handy for filling up uh, the air in our paddle boards uh, outside of the van. This bench, we ha also have these two uh, doors here that we installed. And this is where our water tank is. So we have a 40 gallon water tank here uh, connected to a uh, water pump there and we also use this as a little bit of a utility cabinet for like our jumper cables our fire extinguisher we also have like a utility camping shovel right there this tube here is our water fill so on the outside of the van which i'll show you in just a second uh, that's our water fill where we can connect a hose and fill up the water tank and then obviously that back there is our little outdoor shower box um, but yeah that other than that that's pretty much it for the plumbing cabinet Right here we have our water fill port. So we just unscrew this little cap here and that's where we connect our hose and fill up the water tank. This is our shore power inlet. So this is where we can plug up into shore power and charge the batteries just by plugging into a house or any like 120 volt outlet. Um, right here we have our uh, vents for the air conditioner and then uh, just the solo window on the side of the box truck. Um, we chose to do minimal windows uh, to keep it stealth. You'll notice that on the other side of the van we actually don't have any windows and that's because uh, to keep it stealth if we're parked parallel somewhere we're usually on the right side of the street and people driving by looking at the left side of the van there's no windows so it doesn't look like really anyone's in there um, and then the only other windows we have are on the two back doors there and they're pretty small windows that we can cover up pretty well at night. Okay, and last but certainly not least, uh, we have all of our walls and ceiling, uh, which are pine wood, and we stained them a white stain and then sealed them over. Um, so yeah, all of the walls and the ceiling uh, and the back doors and the bed lift are all uh, from 16 foot long pieces of pine tongue and groove shiplap, uh, which we Put together and the reason why we chose the 16 foot long pieces is because our box is 16 feet long so it uh, worked out perfectly for that that concludes a tour of basil the box truck thank you for tuning in and we wanted to let you guys know that we'll continue filming our journey as we go up the pacific coast we're hoping to go all the way to alaska this summer if the canadian border is open and then head east through idaho montana and ending up on the east coast by the fall foliage we have lots of exciting adventures ahead we are so excited to have you guys along for the journey and just continue sharing moments from van life and kind of our experiences and yeah so thanks for being here and if you guys like this video and want to see more and support us feel free to like and subscribe and leave a comment ask us any questions we're happy to answer um, anything that comes to mind and until next time